All right, you guys, we're going to get into what Mel Kuyper said from ESPN and his grading, uh, which is crazy. Uh, Mel Kuyper gives us a C plus. Wow. The Titans were a popular team in mock drafts for predictions on the first team to take an offensive tackle. But I said a few times I thought they could trade down from seven and still get one of the best tackles in the class. With Joel gone to the Chargers at number five, though it seemed like Tennessee panicked at least a little bit in selecting J.C. Latham. Yes, the offense ranked 31st in sack rate per drop back 11.1% last season and allowed 64 sacks, which were the second most in history of its franchise, which is crazy. But as I wrote Thursday, I have doubts about whether Latham can play left tackle. And the Titans have now taken a right tackle and a guard in the top 11 in back-to-back -back drafts. Is that the best use of high picks? I'm not sure, though. I do I do think Latham can be phys uh, a physically imposing run blocker. In round two, Tennessee reached for a nose tackle to Vondre Sweat 30 at 38, who I thought was more of a third rounder because of his inconsistent play and an arrest for driving while intoxicated earlier this month. Um... <laughs> uh, let, let, hold on, wait a minute. Obviously, we needed a tackle, but he's saying... He's saying that um, he thinks Latham can be a physically imposing run blocker. Well, no shit, he's huge. Um, but to 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 see that he's got doubts uh, in Latham overall, it seems, is crazy. Um, he's given up barely any sacks in his whole college career. He's way stronger than Joe Alt. Um, I I don't understand how how it's reaching for a need. That's why I don't understand. Um, it, it's crazy to me. Um, Mel Kuyper says some some things that are correct, some things that are incorrect. Regardless, people listen to his opinion, uh, whether they agree with him or not. Um, but I'm going to disagree with him on J.C. Latham. J.C. Latham is a real big guy that can move. He's strong. He's a team first guy. And you already saw him and Will Levis looking like they're best friends already. It's going to be a great combination. Uh, reaching for J.C. Latham at seven is is basically what he's saying. I disagree with that completely because there was there were so many drafts that had J.C. Latham going over Joe Alt to the Chargers. Um, so Chargers had their first pick of the bunch. They they chose Joe Alt. We got J.C. Latham. Let's find out who's better, Mr. Mel Kuyper. Uh, he goes on to say in the round two with the Devondre Sweat, mid-third rounder of his inconsistent play. Um, I'm going to let everybody know he's playing at three. He's at 366 pounds. He wants to play at 350 to 355, where he said he will be a Hall of Famer. <laughs> uh, but you think about it, uh, all that power and, 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 and weight and size and, um, all, you know, just explosion uh, with Tavondre Sweat lining up next to Jeffrey Simmons, who Jeffrey Simmons himself has already tweeted he's excited about having another dog next to him get to work. How do you stop someone who's going to, you know, who's 366 pounds that coming out of high school was, you know, he has a lot of experience at DE because he got most of his his uh, his weight later on, over 100 pounds later in his life, which is crazy, bro. So he's not just a big guy that doesn't have any experience. He's not just a run clogger. He's been, when we drafted him, we made it clear he's a three down player. He's going to play three down. That's, that's what our goal for him is to do. He needs to get in a little bit better shape. He will be. And again, he's surrounded by the right people to help him get that done. And then he talks about the uh, arrest for driving intoxicated. We've talked about that before. This is crazy. Um, yeah, he was a little bit over the legal limit. Not an excuse. You shouldn't be drinking and driving. Um, he was actually hit, I believe they said, from behind, Mike Keith said. And his car rolled three times where he actually got out of the car and walked away fine. So it just shows you how tough he really is. Um, that being said, you don't need to be drinking and driving at all. Um, let's hope that... Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, the the new coaching, the new, uh, you know, the people that run the team upstairs. Let's hope that, you know, Rand Carthon and the boys, hopefully everybody can kind of make sure he's he's uh, he's going to be OK. I think uh, Jeffrey Simmons is going to give him that big brother program and um, and he's going to let him know because uh, a lot of people need to understand. Uh, a lot of people thought we reached on Big Jeff. Big Jeff was a top five to ten on everybody's draft boards. And he slid down to us at 18. And it's, the reason was because of, uh, was it eight? I can't remember. Somebody put, I'm pretty sure it was 18. Um, but uh, the reason the reason being was because of the off the field issues. Um, he had a lot of them. You know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, you don't know what you're going to get uh, off the field, but on the field, you're getting a monster, uh, a f an amazing football player. And Big Jeff turned it all around. So grateful when he was drafted, crying. And, and, and he understands what it's like to be a true pro on and off the field. 
Um, he's turned into one of the best players we've ever drafted already, and he's just getting into his prime. Uh, so you put Tavondre Sweat's big ass uh, next to Jeffrey Simmons, you can't stop that. It's going to be impossible. So you can go ahead and continue to hate on that too, Kuiper. Um, then he goes on to say, Cedric Gray, you guys, and this is, we didn't have a third round pick. This was our fourth round pick, Cedric Gray, uh, pick 106. He says he could be a steal in round four. He might never be great in coverage, but he can blitz off the edge and be a menace between the tackles in the run game. See, what the hell is he talking about? He had high... That doesn't make any sense. He's one of the better cover linebackers in the draft. Wasn't he the best one? Like, he can cover everybody. Yeah, he's a good blitzer also. Like, this is crazy to me. It's almost like Mel Kuyper is not watching it correctly. I do agree with him. It, like, I thought he was going to be a late second, early third. That's kind of where I had him. No later than mid third. That's just crazy to me. Uh, just because inside linebackers, unless you're like off the fucking paper, just like superstar or whatever, they, you know, you tend to slide a little bit. Uh, you hear the phone call, Cedric Gray saying, take me, I'm going to be a tight, I'm going to be that guy. Uh, and that just shows you right there, um, he, he's he's going to fit in perfect. He's telling he's telling everybody, I'm the green guy, I'm going to be the guy. Like, I'm going to call the plays, I'm going to be that. He just seems like the perfect personality also that's going to fit into what we're trying to do and when we're, you know, building this new team. Uh, and, and it's crazy because on paper, man, we're we're a problem. Cedric Gray is going to start day one, week one, next to Kenneth Murray Jr. as the inside linebackers for the Tennessee Titans, and it's going to be great. They're going to really do so well. Uh, let's see. Um, he says, James Williams, pick 242, is a 6'4". He's actually 6'5", but uh, whatever they say, 6'4", safety, who likely will have to play linebacker at the next level. Um, he doesn't really say much about him. He is going to play linebacker for the Tennessee Titans, though. Uh, and he's not talk, and, and he's not going to go on to talk about anyone else, really. Uh, he said, um, I think James Williams, he's a hammer, bro. So uh, at the linebacker position, we want to get more fierce. We want to scare the people from coming across the middle. We want to let these running backs and all these people know that we got some boomers out there. And he's somebody that's going to come to the team. And a lot of people are like, oh, how'd they have, well, he's seventh round pick, blah, blah, blah. It, it's because he's changing positions pretty much. He doesn't have as much as experience as a lot of the people do at linebacker. That's the basically the reason. Um, and being a 6'4", six, 6'5", six, safety, you're typically too big. <laughs> but uh, I'm excited about him. I think he's going to you know, use him on special teams to you know, try to draw the, draw the ball loose and fum make, cause some you know, havoc fumbles and stuff. Uh, we, we'll see how he lines up where he fits into the, uh, you know, to the linebacker depth and um, see where it goes from here. But I'm ready to see him learn and develop. And, and again, you can't teach that type of uh, aggression where you like contact. You either do or you don't, and he does. Uh, he says, if Latham makes an easy conversion to left tackle and immediately dominates, this class will look much bat better, as is I don't love the value overall. So he gives it a C plus. Um, again, I think this is crazy to me. Um, you know, I think J.C. Latham was arguably the best tackle in the draft. Uh, you look at, you know, who he is and, and the size and, and, and the personality and everything like that. He may not have as much left tackle experience, obviously, as Joe Alt. Um, so that's probably why Joe Alt gets the nod. Uh, the day before the draft happened, I actually tweeted out and I said, J.C. Latham is my number two tackle going into the draft, barely. And I said this word for word, barely behind Joe Alt. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm glad that we did, we did get J.C. Latham because he's 100 times stronger than Joe Alt. Um, he, that's a fact. Um, and, and again, I would have loved Joe Alt. Don't, don't, don't get that confused. So uh, overall, he gives us, it's Mel Kuyper from ESPN gives us a C plus. I've already given us an A, a minus for many other reasons. Um, so again, man, make sure you guys hit that like button, comment, subscribe, let us know in the comment section below you guys, uh, how you guys are feeling about what Mel Kuyper gave us. What do you think about how he, you know, talked about our team and whatnot? I think he's completely wrong. I do agree with that. Uh, if, if, uh, JC Latham does have an easy conversion to left tackle and dominates, then, uh, you know, it, it it'll, it's obviously going to be better for us. We're expecting him to dominate though. So, um, Mel Kuyper gives the Titans a C plus. Let me know who you guys uh, what grade do you guys give the Titans uh, for the draft? But Mel Kuyper is going to give us a C plus. I think he's crazy. Tighten up, Code Blue Cyclops swag. You can't spell Titans without putting that T A in it. Let's go! Wow.